Today we're going to be shooting more bubbles. It's going to be a really easy shoot that you guys can follow along with at home and it's going to be a really cool little distraction for you guys during the winter. Uh, we're going to be shooting shaving foam and various sprays really, really close up with a reverse lens setup to get some abstract shots. Uh, so stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks and welcome to another macro photography tutorial where today we're going to be shooting bubbles. We're going to be getting out some uh, some aerosols um, and making some uh, little patches of bubbles that we can get up nice and close to. We shot some bubbles before, uh, we've got a couple of bubble videos which I'll link in the top right hand corner of your screen now. Um, so you can go and check those out as well if you fancy a different style. All of these are going to create some really cool abstract shots that you can do at home on your own content coffee table. Uh, with the type of bubbles that we're doing today, they're going to be really, really small, so we need to get really close. And that's what this uh, contraption is going to allow us to do. Um, I've got a little uh, mirrorless camera, a little Canon EOS M here, um, and I've got a reverse lens setup with an extension tube on the front of it. Uh, so let me run you through really quickly how this is set up. We've got a little adapter here, which um, allows us to reverse the lens and add uh, an extension tube here. Um, so the extension tube is going to allow us to get uh, variable zoom and variable focus on our bubbles as we get nice and close. It's also going to make sure that we can get really, really close and get a really high magnification factor uh, as we change the distance between the camera and the lens here. Uh, the lens that we're using is a reverse lens, so that's just screwed onto the front of uh, the extension tube here uh, on what would normally be the front of the lens. So we've got a 50mm lens here, um, which is a manual lens, it's got a, a variable aperture on the front here just by clicking around um, the adjustment ring. Um, but you'll notice that the front of the lens is actually uh, the contact that would normally go onto the camera, and that's because the, uh, the lens is backwards. The way that's going to work is where uh, a normal lens, so if this was uh, a normal 50mm lens attached to the camera, it would make something uh, quite big, like a, like a landscape. It would take that large subject and uh, focus it down to be small enough to fit onto your camera sensor. When you turn the lens around, it's going to make something very, very small, larger to fit onto your camera sensor. So we're going to get a really great magnification factor, which we'll need uh, when you take a look at these bubbles. I'm going to get those bubbles out now, uh, set up down on my coffee table and, uh, and have a look through the lens at what we can actually see. I've put the camera down on a little mini tripod here so that we can get a little bit of stability. And we're going to need that stability throughout this entire shoot because this lens setup is so, so powerful. The magnification is really high. Now to give you uh, sort of an impression of how high that magnification is, we need to take a look through the lens. I need to give you uh, a bit of a reference point to how close we're actually getting. And to do that, I've got a little USB wire here. Everybody should have one of these in their home or you should at least know um, roughly how large this is. Um, so when I put it down in front of the camera, uh, you should have a good idea of how close this actually is and we're actually so close that you can see the imperfections in the metal. That's the very edge of the USB wire there. Um, and you can see just the little squares in the, uh, in the metal there and the seam. So we are going to be getting very, very close today. Um, it's going to be a really interesting shoot, especially because these aerosol bubbles, uh, we're going to be uh, spraying some of this stuff and it almost looks um, solid to the naked eye. You can't actually see that there's tiny little bubbles there um, unless you get really, really close. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm going to uh, set up um, our lighting and spray some of our shaving foam and hairspray and then we can take a look at uh, our bubbles nice and close up. So we've got our camera and lens set up. Now we need a subject and we're shooting bubbles. I've got some, uh, I've got some shaving foam here, um, which you can see that I've already uh, been spraying it a little bit. Um, it doesn't get used very often in this house, as you might imagine. Um, but I also have some of my wife's uh, hairspray, some uh, fairly expensive 
uh, mousse, which is going to uh, give a slightly different effect uh, to our um, our shaving foam. So I'm going to be using both of those, but we need something to spray them onto so that we can move our camera all the way around our subject. The camera is going to be staying here on this little mini tripod. We do need to raise the subject up a little bit so that we can get our lighting all the way around and uh, move our camera around as well. I'm going to be using an upturned wine glass just so that we can uh, spray a little bit of foam onto the top here. And then we've got a nice little platform for our bubbles to sit on. Now you can see from here that this looks um, well, almost solid, you've not got any actual bubbles in there that we can see, so we're going to need to get some lighting out and uh, and set up our camera so that we can actually see these tiny little bubbles in this setup. Because we're getting so close up to our subject today, we're going to need quite a lot of supplemental light. And of course, the way that we're going to get that light is using the Adapt Look Studio, uh, both with our LED lighting arms and our brand new flash lighting arms. I'm just attaching our control pod to a miniature tripod here. Um, and a quick tip if you like using these miniature tripods like we do to support your lighting and your camera as well, um, especially if you've got a ridiculously long and heavy lens on the front of your camera, um, there's a way to counteract that weight um, and the weight of the lighting arms as well when you add those in. Uh, it adds quite a lot of weight and uh, force pulling the front of the, uh, the control pod down. If you orient your, your control pod uh, to uh, the same orientation as a single one of these legs and the same for our camera here. You'll notice that the leg is sticking out underneath um, the lens. That's going to uh, support the weight of um, both the lighting arms and the lens. If you, uh, if you had it so that it was sticking out in between two legs, then uh, that might have a tendency to uh, topple over. Not so much when uh, you have it with a single leg underneath uh, the middle of that weight. Uh, so that's just a really quick tip for using these mini tripods. Uh, we absolutely love these things, so uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys using them as well. So I've got my camera up on a miniature tripod, which is not so miniature now that we've extended the legs. Um, I've got my shaving foam over here, uh, nice and close to the end of the lens because we have a really uh, narrow working distance here. We've got, uh, it's probably only five or six centimeters bef uh, between the uh, end of the lens and the subject, uh, which means we're going to need um, some really uh, interesting lighting techniques to get in uh, between this gap and light our subject. Uh, I've got our flash lighting arm here, which I'm going to plug into uh, the Adapt Look Studio over here. Um, and then I'm going to bring that down so it's shining uh, just between the gap between our lens and the subject. Uh, now there's one thing missing from this picture and that's the IR blaster which goes on the top of our camera's hot shoe and it just screws on there. Um, and then when we take our pictures, it will uh, send a signal over to the flash lighting arms, it'll flash and uh, light our subject. Now you might be thinking why are you starting out with flash? Well it's because uh, this lens, uh, as, as stable as this setup is, because it's so close, every little movement, every little shake, even cars and trucks driving past my house is shaking everything just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit of camera shake uh, no matter how hard we try. That's not the case with flash. When you're using flash, of course, it's going to give off a really uh, bright and quick flash of light, which will actually freeze our subject and remove any, uh, any camera shake, any subject shake, or just any movement in the scene at all. So that's going to get us some really crisp shots, uh, some really fine detail in our bubbles, um, and hopefully uh, we're going to get some really cool abstract shots. Now you can see here that we're getting 
quite a shallow depth of field. Now depth of field is always going to be a little bit shallow in uh, macro photography, but we're particularly shallow because we're using this extension tube because we're so close into our subject. To compensate for that, I'm going to close down our aperture a little bit to about f11. Um, I'm going to go to a slower shutter speed, which we can afford to do because of the flash. Uh, and I'm going to uh, take another shot and you can see there that there's a lot more of those bubbles in focus. So uh, a, a narrower aperture, uh, slower shutter speeds are going to be better for uh, types of subjects uh, where you need to get up really, really close, especially if you're using flash. Usually that shot would give us quite a lot of uh, camera shake, especially with um, a setup like this that is prone to a little bit of movement. The next thing I'm going to do is spray uh, a new little um, mound of our shaving foam uh, and move our lens out a little bit. So you can see here that I've uh, I've changed our um, our extension tube to zoom all the way out, and I want to get a few shots of the um, of the shaving foam a little wider out because when you spray this stuff, it creates some really interesting patterns and effects uh, and I want to capture some of that texture using our lighting, shooting from a single direction, creating some really abstract shots. Uh, so the bubbles in these shots are going to be a little bit smaller, um, but we're going to get some of those really nice textures of, uh, of the foam itself. Now the next thing that we can do with this as well is to add some of these little uh, colour filters and gels that we've got for our flash. So I'm just going to add um, an orange gel over the front out of our flash lighting arm here um, and that should give us a little bit of colour in our images which creates some really interesting abstract shots. I particularly like the uh, the red filter on there, it gives it quite a, a menacing look, almost like an alien landscape. Next I'm going to try a little bit of this, uh, this hair mousse, uh, which I think actually has some slightly larger bubbles. I'm just going to move our lighting out of the way here, just for a second, and then spray some mousse instead. Oh wow, that actually... Uh, expands quite a lot so yeah there's going to be a lot more air a lot more bubbles in uh, in this stuff than there was in the shaving foam and getting up close should give us some more interesting and larger bubbles to take a look at I've just switched over to a couple of LED lighting arms and the reason for that is because I'm doing a little bit of videography with these bubbles. These bubbles are quite a lot larger than the, um, than the shaving foam counterparts and that means that we can actually see them as they're moving, popping, changing around which makes them for some really interesting video. Now, uh, if you watched our last video where we talked about the different kinds of lighting, uh, continuous and flash, and the uh, differences between those, you'll notice that uh, one of the disadvantages of flash is that you can't do video with it. So we're using the LED lighting arms here to do a little bit of uh, videography. You'll also notice that as I'm talking, uh, there's a lot of shaking going on uh, in this in this video that the camera is now taking. Um, and that uh, gives you a good idea of how much camera shake we're dealing with, even though nothing in this setup is actually moving, just me moving my arms and moving around, uh, is, is creating quite a lot of shake in the camera. Uh, so when we go back to taking some stills, uh, we're going to enjoy that um, uh, that advantage of the flash lighting arms getting rid of that camera shake. This has been a really interesting lens setup to uh, get to grips with. It's been really, really cool, uh, despite looking a little bit uh, silly with probably the tiniest camera that we've got and uh, the longest macro lens that we own as well. Um, this is a, a really effective um, setup for getting super close-up shots of something like these tiny little bubbles. And our flash has been invaluable as well for counteracting the disadvantages of uh, a lens setup like this. Uh, 
Uh, now, uh, as you probably know if you've watched any of the last few videos, um, we are now uh, funding our Flash lighting arms over on Kickstarter. Uh, if you're watching this video uh, the week of release, it's the last week of that Kickstarter, the last week that you can get um, the flash lighting arms at a really good price over on Kickstarter. I'll link up in the top right hand corner over to the Kickstarter page so if you want to get your hands on some flash lighting arms for the Adapt Look Studio then go and check out the Kickstarter campaign. If you've enjoyed this video though, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Uh, make sure to like the video while you're down there. And if you've enjoyed this macro photography tutorial and want to see more in the future, make sure to subscribe. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.